The, the trends for overall m and activity in China actually have been quite subdued. Um, we actually saw uh, a small decline uh, both in the number of deals uh, and in the value of those deals, both down by around about um, 5%. I think there are uh, a number of factors that are affecting that, um, probably four key factors. First of all is the, uh, the change in leadership in China, which was taking effect certainly in the first quarter of uh, 2013. Um, secondly is the policy direction after that change in leadership and there was at first and perhaps still some uncertainty as to the direction of policy. Um, thirdly there is the general slowdown um, in the China economy um, and fourthly um, we've seen this tightening credit situation uh, in China which affects um, not only um, the economy itself um, but also the availability of financing for M&A. So in this environment, actually, I think what we're seeing is a lot of caution around M&A, companies being very selective and focused in the deals that they do, and it's leading to this generally subdued level of activity. Certainly in the next six months, we expect that caution will continue to be the watchword. There will continue to be, to some extent, a wait and see approach. Um, having said that, and maybe looking a little bit beyond 2013 and into 2014, I think that there are some quite important factors that are driving M&A on an upward trend. Um, and I think a key factor here is the shifting of the Chinese economy and the fact that in many, if not most, industry sectors, there's a lot of overcapacity currently and that overcapacity needs to be squeezed out of the system um, and that can happen in a couple of ways. One, it can happen through M&A, so we'll drive M&A activity. Um, secondly, it can happen by allowing companies to fail and I think one of the things that we expect to see, um, certainly as we start to go into 2014, is more and more debt restructuring situations in China and so both of these aspects I think will drive transactional activity. Um, in China and a big part of that as I say is in around squeezing excess capacity um, out of the economy in China. Uh, first of all I, I must say that the decline in outbound activity has come as something of a surprise um, but if you look behind the figures actually you can split the outbound activity between state-owned enterprises buying assets overseas and private enterprises in China buying assets overseas, where in fact the, the decline has happened is not in the state sector but in the private sector. Um, and I think there's a couple of factors at play there. One is, again, this general slowing down in China, difficult market conditions inside of China. So you've got chief executives, entrepreneurs running those private businesses who have to be quite focused actually on their home market and the, the difficulties and issues in their home market. So, that, so a decision to start to go overseas and do some difficult and risky M&A transactions overseas is, is more difficult, I think, in that environment. This is the first factor behind that slowdown. The second factor, I think, is the availability of debt financing for M&A, uh, in particular in the private sector. That has tightened up considerably. So for many POEs, they do not have access to bank lending to finance M&A. That's not the case for the state-owned enterprises. Now, having said that, I think the fundamental reasons for that activity to continue to be there and to grow continue to exist. The private sector, I think, does need to go out. They want to go out. They want to acquire brands, technology, know-how, intellectual property, bring that back and put it to use in the China economy. Those drivers still exist and we're coming off a fairly low base. So we do, in fact, expect the uh, level of outbound activity both in the state-owned sector and the privately-owned sector to continue to increase and we're seeing that within our own business. We're working for companies in early stage of, dis, uh, of diligence. Um, we're seeing that activity coming through the pipeline. So we do expect a recovery in the second half of 2013. 
Um, there are many uh, challenges, uh, but I think probably the number one challenge facing the private equity industry is their ability to monetize past investments, their ability to exit from situations and uh, investments that they've made in the past. Um, typically, the private equity industry in China has been a growth capital industry, um, so that typically involves buying minority stakes, uh, injecting capital for growth, and leading to an IPO as a source of exit. Um, clearly, the IPO markets are uh, somewhat dysfunctional at the moment, effectively closed in China and not terribly receptive uh, overseas. So the IPO as a means of exit uh, is, is, is difficult and challenging now for the private equity industry. In addition to that, you have this cumulative position where the industry has largely been in buying mode for the last several years and is now coming to the lives in the fund, the, the time in the lives of the fund where they need to exit their investments. So there is a large overhang of assets and companies that have been acquired which now need to be sold and I think this really is the number one challenge for the industry. It's starting to drive the industry away from growth capital and more towards a buyout industry which is a natural kind of maturing that we have seen in other markets such as uh, Europe and the US but I think that number one issue is really the ability now to exit some of those previous, those previous investments. Mm -hmm.